Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we continue learning Python and today we will work with ChatGPT in Python. Let's start. If you don't know what ChatGPT is, it's an application with a neural network that allows you to generate text, generate code, complete the code, find bugs in code and do all sorts of stuff. They have examples, they have their limitations, capabilities, everything described in the ChatGPT itself. And if you want to use it, go to chatopenai.com slash chat. You need to log in or register if you don't have an account and you're going to be able to use it. So I'm pretty sure most of you already heard about ChatGPT, but what we are going to do today is not just look at it, but we're going to use it in the Python and we're going to create our own um, CLI application for us to use that ChatGPT in Python. So let's start. But once again, maybe some of you haven't seen it yet, and I'm going to show you what it is capable of. So let's say that we need to, okay, there are examples here, but let's say explain how Python compiles its code. Uh, an error occurred. Uh, yeah, I probably need to restart the chat because that tab was open for a really long time. So let's say uh, explain Python code compilation. We just texted and uh, yeah, okay, that is kind of awkward. Let me do this then. I'm gonna reload the application. Maybe my token, no, okay, everything is fine. Explain Python code completion or compilation. And yeah, as you see, it's thinking. And now it says, in Python code compilation refers to the process of converting Python source code or Python to source code. And uh, it's gonna tell us how it works. So including parsing, tokenizing, translating the source code. It says, what are the steps? How it does the thing, how it works. We can also say something like generate, um, generate C++ quick sort. That's it, generate C++ quick sort. Um, so, so quick sort is a sorting algorithm. If you don't know, C++ is a programming language. And as you can see, it generates the code. So that is a really, really powerful bot because we can ask anything. We can have normal human-like conversations with that bot and it works very, very well. And I'm pretty sure most of you have already heard about it. But today, once again, we're gonna use it in Python. And what do you need to do in order to do that? First of all, go to betaopenai.com. So betaopenai.com, it's like the main website and you need to register or log in here as well. And then you're gonna be left with that page. And of course, the link is in the description. So you're gonna be left with that page. Here we have text completion, code completion, lots of stuff. So image generation, embeddings, fine tuning, and all that stuff. But we need text completion. So we click here and uh, it opens up the documentation. Of course, you can read all of it, but the only thing that you need to do is find one of these. So one of those things and then press open in playground. Why do we need that? Because playground is uh, a thing that allows us to tune our models. And of course, here we can see all the modes. We can see completion. We can see edit. I don't know what that is, but yeah, all the modes, all the models, all the settings for those models. And of course we can run some tests. So if you want to fine tune your model, if you want to change some settings, go here and do that here. But the most important thing for us right now is the model name. So as you can see, we have, uh, if we press on model, we can have that pop up and we see codex and GPT-3. Of course we need GPT-3 models and they're named after famous people like Ad Lovelace, Baggage, I don't know what that is, Marie Curie and Leonardo da Vinci. We're gonna use da Vinci 003 because that's the latest model of, of uh, today, as of today. We're gonna use it and remember that uh, name. Of course you can tune, tune some settings, you can play with the bot and all that stuff. But what we need to do in order to just run that model is go to personal and view at API keys. We press here and here what you need to do is create new secret key. Then you just copy that secret key and go to your Python project. So go to your Python project, save it somewhere, but do not show that key to anyone else. I'm showing you that key because I'm gonna delete it once that video is recorded and published, but you don't need to show that key to anyone else. And I also have a video on how to store your keys, your passwords and your sensitive, sensitive data in your Python applications. You need, you need to use environment variables or somehow pass them to your project. Don't just store them in strings, but I'm gonna store it in a string code I'm going to delete it and that's just an example. Once you've done that, we can go to examples in the header and here you have a lot of things. All of them kind of do the same thing. So what you need to do is find something like, um, let's say, let's say natural language to open AI API or English to other languages. We can click here and we can copy all that code. 
let's copy it. Boom. Let's paste it here. Let's delete all the rubbish. And then as you can see, uh, what they do here is they import OS, that's a pre-installed module in Python, and then they import OpenAI. What you need to do is open up your terminal and write pip install OpenAI, like this. Once you've installed that uh, library, you can use it and you can use ChatGPT or any other service from OpenAI directly. And as you can see, what they do here first is they say OpenAI.API key is OS.getEnt. That's a, an environment variable and you should store it kind of like this. So you can use different methods of getting your environment variable, but that should be your open API key. It should not be visible in your project. But since that's just an example, I'm going to paste it here. But be sure to check out my other video on how to store your keys and passwords. Okay, and then we have this. We have response with all the settings. And uh, what does it say? Open AI, completion, create. So we're using completion module. We can use image module in order to generate images or some other modules in order to, in order to do some other stuff. But we're going to use completion because that's what uh, ChatGPT uses. And then it says, Moto is text DaVinci 003. If you want to try other models, you can just go to Playground and choose whatever model you like. There are lots of models here, so around 15 models, so you can choose whatever you like. We, I'm going to use text DaVinci 003 as that's the latest one. And then we're saying that prompt is translate this into French, Japanese, da, 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 da. Prompt is data that you want to pass to your JetGPT. So if you look at the website itself, here, that's our prompt. So the thing that I write is the prompt itself. So what we need to do is just write the text that we need. And also you have some settings. So temperature, max tokens, top P. I do not know all this stuff, but um, you can read about it in the playground. So you just hover over it and it says some maximum length. The maximum length of your, so how many tokens you can generate. Let's change our max tokens to, let's say a thousand. So our text can be a thousand symbols long. Okay, we're gonna delete all that thing, all those things like zero, to, zero point zero. Why do we need that? I don't know, but I'm just gonna delete it. And that is the last thing that we have. Now let's write something in the prompt. So what I'm gonna write is, hello, how are you feeling? And then what we need to do is print that response. Okay, let's run our code and as you can see, it returned this. We have an object, a JavaScript object, JSON object, choices, and then our choice. So what do we need to do in order to get that text? That is our choice. So that is the text that uh, the chat GPT well, sent us, responded with. So what do we need to do in order to get the text is we need to get the choices. So choices, then zero text. So choices key, first index, key text. And now we get, I'm feeling good, thank you, how about you? And that is the thing that ChatGPT told us. And now what we can do is we can change that uh, prompt in order to generate random, or not some, not random, but generate other answers. So let's say, write a Python code to, mm, write a Python code for a binary sort. I don't know, that's the simplest algorithm I can tell you about right now. So let's see, write a Python code about or on binary sort or for a binary sort. And here you have it, binary sort, array, it sorts the array, it uses, uh, well, it uses generators and all that stuff and also uses uh, recursion. Not the best way to do it, but still, that's a Python code. And what we want to do right now is just make our boat infinite so we can talk to it as much as we want. And what we need to do is while true, move that code there and instead of prompt, you just need to write input and let's put that as a prompt. So colon, colon, colon. And now we can write this. Hello. Hi there. How are you doing? As you can see, the boat response. We can do something like explain uh, thermodynamics. And it's going to explain it. Of course, there is a delay because the boat needs the boat needs to think. But thermodynamics is the study of energy and transformations. All that stuff. We can do whatever we want. Generate SQL for a user, user's database, Facebook. Kind of like that. And it's going to generate, generate an SQL code for our user. So user, first name, well, it's only one table, but still. And that's how we can create the simplest chat GPT version in Python. My name is Andrew. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and bye-bye.